Hello and welcome. Thank you so much for watching. This show is all about giving you insights and showcasing brands that help you to live your best life and give you confidence. As always, I want to kickstart your morning with some motivational advice to help you to feel inspired and energized to start your day. Today, I want to talk about the importance of always believing everything is working out in your favor. One of my favorite affirmations when I feel doubt or uncertainty is reminding myself that everything is working out in my favor. Most often, when I think this way, not only do I feel more confident in any situation, but I feel assured and at peace that the universe has my back. The moment I start thinking this way, blessing and opportunities begin to flow into my life, even better than I imagined. Why? Because what you think about most shows up in your life. We become what we believe and what we believe manifests in our reality. This is what we call the law of attraction. Thinking everything works out in your favor doesn't mean you will always win immediately in every situation and that things will run smoothly. It means whether the situation is good or bad in the moment that it will eventually fall into place, ultimately working in your favor. The truth is you are meant to flourish and live your best life. So no, no matter how bad a situation may seem, if you see it as an opportunity to learn and grow and evolve, you will always be winning no matter what life throws at you. Expect good things to show up in your life, and they will. As the saying goes, the entire universe is conspiring to give you everything you want. Stay tuned, coming up after the break. And I did see a lot of celebrities are wearing your clothes. Uh, Victoria Beckham, let's talk about some of the celebrities that are sporting your brand. Yeah, so Victoria Beckham wore a Don't Tell Me to Smile jacket uh, when she was here in Toronto uh, last year, I believe it was. And, you know, which speaks so much to kind of her whole thing. Everyone says she doesn't smile, so it kind of was the perfect uh, blend of our brand with her. Uh, Kim Cattrall's worn our stuff, she's worn some of our suits. We've had Sophie Trudeau, Alessia Cara, just to name a few. Next up on the show, we have clothing designer Hilary McMillan. Her brand is a size-inclusive, contemporary, cruelty-conscious Canadian women's wear brand renowned for offering versatile contemporary pieces in timeless silhouettes. Hilary, thank you so much for being on the show today. How are you doing? I'm good. Thanks. Thanks so much for having me. I'm very excited to be here. Well, thanks for being here today. So let's talk about your company. You founded it in 2013. When did you have your aha moment when you decided you wanted to be a designer? Um, so I was thinking about this. I don't really think I necessarily had like this aha moment that I could like, you know, describe right off like this one in, in moment, but it was definitely like a slow grind to kind of get to where I am. And a lot of people discover your brand and it's new to them. And they think there's just like this one moment in time that kind of changed everything. Um, but it was kind of, you know, go over the years of becoming more and more successful and selling and wholesaling to more places that I kind of saw like that it could be a prosperous company and it could be a prosperous um, endeavor. I would say that if I had to describe aha moment, um, I was lucky that because I, you know, my sister had a store on Queen Street, a jewelry store, and I was able to get it into her store immediately and kind of get initial reactions um, from consumers. And so that kind of positive reaction um, and seeing people kind of wear it and love what I was doing was maybe my aha moment. Mm -hmm. um, it was before Instagram and Facebook and all this kind of stuff, so we couldn't do all this like guerrilla marketing that you can kind of do now. So getting into a store as a small designer was such a big, big move for me. So, you know, kind of seeing people liking my first ever collection, I guess, was maybe my aha moment. Mm -hmm. And you know, what I love about your collection is that it's size inclusive, which you really can't find with high-end brands. And I think that's really important because there's obviously all shapes and sizes. So why did you make that decision to extend your sizes? So I actually think it's a big shame that not a lot of brands are kind of taking this on. You can definitely, what you're saying is find um, size inclusive and plus size stuff in, um, you know, lower price points. But in terms of like what contemporary kind of where we sit and higher end it is difficult. Um, and so I was, you know, engaging with the plus size community and talking to people, um, you know, above a size 14, 16, which is the average American size um, and, and Canadian is close to that. And um, you know, they were feeling left out of kind of the fashion conversation. They felt like they were kind of second class citizens in this fashion world. Mm -hmm. And hearing more and more about this, it was just such a shame to me. And I, you know, instantly was like, I want to create stuff and not do a separate capsule for, you know, in larger women, but kind of create something that, you know, you can be a size extra small, you can be a size 4X, you can be a 6 or a 26. It shouldn't matter um, as long as, you know, do it right, tweak it right and make it, um, you know, appropriate for different body types. And so that to me, you know, I wanted to be there for women and I wanted to create pieces that could be contemporary, that were a little bit higher end, that were great fabrics, um, you know, seasonally on trend, um, investment pieces per se. And, you know, the reaction we've gotten so far has been amazing and we're just like excited to keep it going, keep growing it. 
Yeah, I think that's so important is to be size inclusive. And I think a lot of other brands now are slowly jumping on the bandwagon of, you know, extending their sizes, because as you said, women come in all shapes and sizes. So it's really important. Let's talk about what inspires your or what, what inspires your creativity when creating these pieces. A lot of it starts for me with the fabric. So I love to kind of see what's on the market, what a lot of mills are creating. Um, you know, I go in definitely with a mindset in into what I want to do and kind of what I want to do color wise. You can, a lot of mills will alter colors too to kind of fit your color palette for that season. Um, my past couple seasons have been heavily inspired by the 70s. So that's kind of a, you know, recurring current you can kind of see throughout a lot of my collections. Um, but yeah, it starts with fabric and it starts with color, kind of my color palettes for the seasons. And then from the fabric, you know, based on what the fabric is, different things being made out of it. So for us, it's a lot of just about like R&D and testing different fabrics and how kind of they work for the body, um, especially being size inclusive, you don't want to create, you know, very stiff fabric. So we're always kind of, you know, sourcing new and new fabrics. And that really is where the design process kind of starts for me, where my kind of creativity um, begins for each season. Mm -hmm. And speaking of seasons, the holiday season is coming up soon. And I did have a chance to see your holiday collection. So let let's talk about that. Yeah, so this year's gonna be a little bit different uh, with the pandemic and COVID. So, you know, everything kind of changes week by week. So we're not exactly sure, you know, where we're gonna be or what we're gonna be doing. So we wanted to create kind of a fun holiday capsule that could, you know, be uh, able to be kind of in this new world we have. So we're calling it like the at home capsule. So um, it's a lot of sparkle pieces. It's a little bit more casual. So we have like a sparkle hoodie that you can wear as a dress, mm -hmm. you can wear it at a hoodie um, if you're kind of doing like an at-home New Year's Eve party or you're doing an at-home Christmas um, so it very much is kind of incorporating a little bit more of a lounge into a holiday capsule we have some other pieces like a wrap dress which are a little bit more um, like a traditional holiday um, but we're trying to keep that in mind with what we're designing now what we're doing to kind of you know meet the need of what people need right now and what they need in their lives yeah and speaking of that I think that's great that you've adapted to COVID and people staying at home so how was your whole collection because you talked about your holiday collection but how was all your pieces kind of adapted to people yeah staying at home probably doing zoom parties instead of going to a real party so yeah let's talk about how your company has adapted so it's definitely all about like from here this is kind of <laughs> uh, yeah. uh, we're seeing a lot of people like investing a lot in tops and then also jewelry has been huge for a lot of companies but for us um we're finding because especially in canada you might not be able to go into people's homes but you can go into a patio or you can go to a park or you can go you know outdoors a lot more so we're finding that outerwear has actually been a really huge for us this fall and we thought that that's what was going to be so we invested when we were doing our um, production scheduling and stuff we kind of were predicting that when it was because lockdown was first happening we were kind of transitioning into moving into fall and what we were producing so we kind of went heavy into our um, outerwear so that's it's been great for us and it's been a great way that people can kind of wear something a little bit more fun and invest in a, uh, you know, a higher price point piece, a little bit more on trend and color, and then, you know, wear the full suit, uh, sweatsuit tracksuit underneath. Mm -hmm. uh, and then what else we're doing is we've also, for the first time, we're launching a lounge collection coming out at the end of November um, to kind of satisfy this, you know, more comfy at home environment we're living in. Um, and then for spring 21, which because we work so far in advance um, as apparel companies do, uh, we've incorporated a lot more kind of elastic things. So all of our pants have an elastic back just in case you are, we are at home or, you know, the way that we work shifts a little bit, you know, if a lot of people more, are more working from home in the future, we want to kind of incorporate these things we've learned over the pandemic into future classes. So little tweaks here and there to make it a little bit more, uh, you know, user friendly per se. Yeah. And I did receive the corduroy trench jacket and I love it because as you said, you know, running to the grocery store or anywhere, I can have this really cool looking jacket that looks really stylish. But then underneath I'm wearing a t-shirt and sweats, right? So it's great. I still look stylish, but I get the best of both worlds. And I did see a lot of celebrities are wearing your clothes. Uh, Victoria Beckham. Let's talk about some of the celebrities that are sporting your brand. Yeah, so Victoria Beckham wore our Don't Tell Me to Smile jacket uh, when she was here in Toronto uh, last year, I believe it was. And, you know, it speaks so much to kind of her whole thing. Everyone says she doesn't smile, so it kind of is the perfect uh, mm -hmm. blend of our brand with her. Uh, King Patrell's worn our stuff, she's worn some of our suits. We've had Sophie Trudeau, Alessia Cara, just to name a few. Um, yeah, and it's really always fun to see when celebrities are wearing stuff. Sometimes we know they're going to do it and sometimes we have no clue. So it's, you know, always a big kind of you know fun moment. It's a little bit more validating, gives our brand a little bit more street cred when a celebrity wears it. Um, I actually love it when I'm walking on the street and symbol upon just like a regular person wearing our brand. Mm -hmm. I think that's 
until they have this kind of a cool moment. It's like that person has no clue who I am. I don't know who they are. And they just like spent the money that they've earned on stuff that, you know, we make. So mm -hmm. it's, it's cool for celebrities and it's cool for regular people. Yeah, and I like that your pricing is pretty affordable too. It's not outrageous. It's good for just, you know, your average shopper that could actually afford the collection. So that, I think that's really great. You know, your brand is all about equal pay, Black Lives Matter, and I think both topics are so important to start a conversation with. So let's talk about how your company is supporting um, both these initiatives. Yeah, so we created our um, varsity capsule uh, three or four years ago now, and I've always, um, thought, you know, feminism, fashion are always intertwined as much as a lot of people kind of feel like high fashion maybe isn't such a feminist issue. But for a long time, um, clothing has been used in feminist actions like suffragists use color, um, even like the access to wearing pants and denim and, you know, the introduction of pockets is all about kind of women's liberation and, and you know, women's rights. So I think they are closely intertwined. Um, and so I've always wanted to create something that could give back. And I've always had that in kind of a mindset of mine. And then because we are a small brand and we can't just, you know, you know, give a bunch of money away right away, we very much have to kind of create to donate. That's kind of been a, um, a staple for us. Mm -hmm. And so the varsity clap was perfect for us. It has sayings on the back about feminist, feminine, feminist, feminine, female issues, um, and you know, women's rights. And so I also wanted to partner with, organizations that I could get back to and being Canadian, I wanted to also give back to Canadian charities. So we started giving 15% of the profits of the collection to Up With Women, which is a Canadian charity that helps at-risk women firmly exit poverty. And a lot of them are homeless and, um, you know, need job training and, and stuff like that and are also disproportionately affected by um, domestic violence. So that's kind of how our charitable endeavor started. And then, um, you know, kind of when the spotlight this year for 2020 got, you know, shined on racial inequality and um, systemic racism and police brutality. We wanted to be very inauthentic in what we were doing and what we were supporting. And so for us, we you know went and did some research and equal pay between men and women has always been something I've been very interested in and something I think that needs to change. It's slowly changing, but working on it. Um, but then I was looking into the stats between you know people of color and white people. So white women and women of color and the discrepancy between that is, is huge as well. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking, you know, the best way that I could do this is by giving 100% um, from the proceeds of that jacket goes to Black Women in Motion, which is a youth-led organization um, based out of Toronto, mm -hmm. um, helps the advancement of Black women and people, uh, women that have been subjected to domestic violence. So very much there has been kind of something that I've wanted to support. And so I'm really happy and proud to be able to do that with some part of my collection that I'm able to. Yeah, I think that's great, and especially because both issues are so important, I think that's great that your brand is supporting these causes. You know, our show is all about inspiration, making people feel good, and you know, a lot of our viewers are entrepreneurs that come here for inspiration, so I always like to ask all my guests um, some of the challenges they experience when being an entrepreneur, because obviously it's not easy, and you know, we see the success, but we don't see what happens behind the scenes. So what's one, like, one obstacle you kind of faced, and how did you get through it? Um, I think for small businesses, the biggest obstacle um, most face is managing finances and, um, you know, income flow, especially during the pandemic. Um, so that's always top of mind for everyone is just managing your expenses, managing your costs and trying to maximize your profits. Um, for me, I think the biggest thing, especially for fashion, is brand awareness is huge. And that kind of plays into, you know, acquiring profits and getting more profitable. So I've always find, found that like that's at the forefront of what we're trying to do is we're getting trying to acquire as many customers as possible and we're trying to get people to know who we are so we've really kind of taken you know a three-pronged strategy with that you know engaging pr uh, in terms of like a from a, a media she handles our media and um kind of you know direct to other businesses and to direct to um stylists and that kind of stuff and then we do heavily um in social media marketing to kind of get to uh the average consumer and the person who's actually shopping. And so this was huge for us when we started becoming size inclusive because you can't just put something out there and expect people to just flood to your website. So for us, it was like, how do we engage with this consumer and how do we um, you know, make them aware of our brand? And so that's kind of been a, a thing that we've always, we're, we're improving on and working on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that's that's great. Uh, thanks for sharing that. Um, let's talk about where people connect with you and your brand on social media. 
Yeah, so we you can do our through our website, www.hillarymacmillan.com, and then our social media for Instagram is at Hillary Macmillan, Twitter, Hillary Macmillan, and Facebook, Hillary Macmillan Apparel. Amazing. Thank you so much, Hillary, for being on the show today. I really appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Tag TV is available on Roku, Amazon Fire TV, Apple and Android TVs, as well as on Apple and Android phones. Watch us live through YouTube and Facebook.